Hello friends, wow, the world is going crazy, that's how I need to start this video. You know I was going to do this video three weeks ago, and it was going to be a short video, 45 minutes, and then everything has turned upside down, and I don't think a short video can cover all of the events that are taking place in the world and in the church. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also when the Son of Man is revealed. Why would Jesus say that? Because we need to understand that today things are much worse than they were in Noah's day. We know that in Noah's day, they did not have Russia who possesses nuclear weapons invading Ukraine. They did not have Israel with Iran who possesses nuclear weapons attacking it via Hezbollah, via the Houthis in Yemen, via Hamas. They did not have China, who possesses nuclear weapons, threatening to invade Taiwan. Nuclear war could break out right now in three places, and many of God's people are spending three to six hours a day in TikTok, Instagram or Facebook. In Noah's day, they did not have biological males living as females. They did not have the natural disasters which are unprecedented in magnitude and, and, and frequency that are taking place right now. Even if we're not watching the news, the world is being decimated by natural disasters and unless you live there, never gets covered in the news. Why did we see Hurricane Helene? Because it's here. Why are we seeing Hurricane Milton, which is going to strike Florida tonight? Because we're living here. You don't hear about Beijing. You don't hear about Dallas. You don't hear about Houston. You don't hear about Rio de Janeiro. All these places that are being decimated. Italy, France, Germany, all of them. It used to be in rural areas. It used to be in secluded cities apart from everywhere else. But now they're moving closer to home, and we're seeing it. Go to YouTube and search for natural disasters. You'll be amazed what you find. And you know, if we don't see natural disasters happening all over the world, we think, oh, the great controversy says that the world's going to be decimated by all these disasters. We're not seeing that. I subscribe to a, to a channel called Newspaper Today, and two or three times a week, I get a short video, two or three minutes, five, eight minutes, about what's happening. Six inch hailstones all over the world. Hurricanes and floods in India, in, German, in uh, Russia, in China, just like Helene, all over the world. We don't see it. Nobody has any clue that that's going on right now. This is from that YouTube channel, New, New Newspaper Today. This is all within two weeks or 12 days. The first one, Oklahoma, USA. Second one, Spain. Third, France. Fourth, Japan. Fifth, Italy. This is in chronological order, October 7th, 2024. This is catastrophic floods in Central Europe as firefighter dies in rescue. Affected six different countries. Look at, look at that water. How Hurricane Helene became a deadly disaster across six states. Some hurricanes are remembered for their wind damage or rainfall, others for their coastal flooding. Hurricane Helene was a stew of all that and more. At least 230 people died across Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, and Virginia. As Helene flooded towns, destroyed roads and bridges, and swept away homes. Friends, these people are not going to get their homes rebuilt. Why? Because I've got friends that have got money, family members, and they cannot get it. It took them a year, year and a half for the contractor to start building. In this labor market, and last year, a lot of insurance companies pulled out of North Carolina. It's, it's sad what is going on. These people are living the time of trouble right now. Dock workers from Maine to Texas go on strike in move that could spark economic doom. Three days later, it was settled. 
the union representing over 45,000 striking dock workers agreed to a deal to suspend strike activity until January 15, 2025. A JP Morgan analysis projected that a strike would cost the U.S. economy 5 billion U.S. daily. The strike could hit 36 ports that handle about one half of U.S. ocean imports. October 1st, Iran fires 200 ballistic missiles at Israel in unprecedented attack. Unprecedented again, keep your eyes on that. Triggering sirens across the country. Daniel 8, which we will study in a few minutes, is the only way to know what is about to happen with Israel, Iran, America, Russia, China, the European Union, and the papacy. These prophecies are to be witnesses in the world. By their fulfillment in these last days, they will explain themselves. The Crest Collection, April 18, 1900. Friends, you know, we've got a lot of information. People in the world don't know that. People in the world have got to be able to read the book of Daniel and say, wow, that's the eagle? That's the lion? That's the bear? That's the leopard? We're going to cover all of that. You will be amazed what is going on. October 2nd, Boeing machinist strike continues with no end or even talks in sight. Look at the update in the bottom. Boeing's and its largest union said on Friday, this is last Friday, that contract talks will resume on October 7th, two days ago. As both sides seek an agreement to end the strike by around 33,000 of the plant plane makers U.S. West Coast factory workers. Milton continues to explosively intensify in the Gulf of Mexico with 175 mile per hour winds. Category 5 is 157. Hurricane specialist Brian Norcross explains how unprecedented, there's our word again, it is to see a storm intensify like this in the Gulf of Mexico and why it could be so deadly. It will make landfall 12 days after Helene. Talks between, this is October 8th, yesterday at 11.48 at night. Talks between Boeing and the Machinist Union break down as strike nears the one month mark. Look at the bottom. Two days of federally mediated talks this week concluded with these two sides still apart. And we're gonna start talking Monday. They talked Monday and Tuesday. Everything fell apart today. Look at the quote. The trades unions will be one of the agencies that will bring upon this earth a time of trouble such as has not been since the world began. Letter 200, 1903. These unions are one of the signs of the last days. Letter 26, 1903. This is from Country Living, pages 9 to 11. Friends, if you have not read this little booklet, you can read it in an hour, maybe two. It's applicable to every Seventh-day Adventist right now. It is much worse today than in Noah's day. The C-19 shot, and I've got to speak in codes because if not, I'm going to be censored by YouTube one more time. Uh, the C-19 shot was a red flag. The natural disasters are a red flag. The labor unions are a red flag. The wars are a red flag. What more could our Lord do to get our attention? He's trying to tell us something and we don't get it. Satan delights in war, for he can thus divert the minds of the people from the work of preparation to stand in the day of God. In accidents and calamities, by sea and by land, in great conflagrations, in fierce tornadoes and terrific hailstorms, in tempests, floods, cyclones, tidal waves, and earthquakes, Satan is exercising his power. It will be declared that those who present claims of the fourth commandment are troublers of the people, preventing their restoration to temporal prosperity. Temporal prosperity, we're hurting right now. <clears throat> In the news they said yesterday, the average household is spending $11,000 more a year in food and commodities that have gone up. Political corruption is destroying the love of justice, the truth right now. 
and regard for truth. And even in free America, rulers and legislatures will yield to the popular demand for a law enforcing Sunday observance. That's from pages 589 to 592 of the Great Controversy. That is the last paragraph of chapter 36. Chapter 30, 37 is the scriptures a safeguard. No, nothing of what's getting ready to happen is just on the scriptures. Chapter 38 is the final warning. Chapter 39 is the time of trouble. Probation has closed. Friends, we are living in the borders of eternity. We need to recognize that. And if we're not watching and praying, we will not see that. The entire world is anxious and fearful, and no better words can describe where we are than these words. The present is a time of overwhelming interest to all living. Rulers and statesmen, men who occupy positions of trust and authority, thinking men and women of all classes, have their attention fixed upon the events taking place about us. They are watching the relations that exist among the nations. They observe the intensity that is taking possession of every earthly element, and they recognize that something great and decisive is about to take place, that the world is on the verge of a stupendous crisis. Prophets and Kings, written in 1917, two years after her death. This is her closing statement. This message has various parts, but it's progressive. In other words, part number two should be watched after part number one. It builds upon each other. So I hope you watch it in that order. So I'm going to deliver it all today, and then I'll break it up into sections. Let us pray. Father in heaven, Jesus has said, watch and pray lest ye enter into temptation. So many things are happening and so fast. It's a perfect trap from the enemy, Father, to make sure that we don't concentrate on the important things that are happening right now in the heavenly sanctuary. We are seeing the world decimated by natural disasters, Father. Help us to realize that we are in the last paragraph of chapter 36 of the Great Controversy just before the National Sunday Law is enacted. It's enacted in paragraph 36, Lord. Help us to understand what is going to happen to your people, Father, when the National Sunday Law is enacted in America. Help us to understand that watch means praying without ceasing, that we may not enter into, into temptation. Father, help us to, the moment we are tempted, to stop and pray, like Jesus did, so that the Holy Spirit can empower us to overcome sin in our lives and we can be able to receive the seal of the living God in Revelation 7. You have warned us, Father, that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Search us, O God, and know our hearts. Try us and know our thoughts and see if there's any wicked way in us and lead us in the way everlasting. Please, Father, help us not to be deceived by sin. And now, as I get ready to present this message, Father, some of the topics in this presentation are so delicate. Others are so extremely important. Please, forgive us where we have failed you. Anoint us with your Holy Spirit that we may be able to comprehend the holiness of your character, the fearful solemnity of the present hour, and the nearness of your coming. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. This is the movie Civil War. It came out in the spring of this year. Why is this important? Look at this clip of the attempted assassination of President Trump. One inch from a potential civil war. Near missing Trump shooting is also a close call for American democracy. These are just a couple of articles that are floating around in the news media, not regular news, but in Twitter and in other what they call the dark web media that are saying that 50% of the country is Democrat, 50% of the country is Republican, and no matter who wins this election, 
in less than 27 days, a civil war is coming to America. Why is that important? In India, China, Russia, and the cities of America, thousands of men and women are dying of starvation. The moneyed men, because they have the power, control the market. They purchase at low rates all they can obtain and then sell at greatly increased prices. This means starvation to the poorer classes and will result in a civil war in China, Russia, and the cities of America. There will be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. Civil war in America takes place just before Jacob's time of trouble commences. This is uh, written 125 years ago, manuscript 114, 1899. Volume 5, pages 305 and 306. On October 3, 2023, I published a two-part YouTube series entitled, Behold, the Bridegroom Cometh. In part one of that series, I shared my opinion that based on my study of prophecy and the Jewish economy, I believe certain events would have taken place by now and they have not. Should we stop studying prophecy because we cannot figure everything out? God forbid. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. Thus the gospel message as given by the Savior himself was based on the prophecies. It was the privilege of the Jewish people to understand these prophecies. Christ urged upon his disciples the importance of prophetic study. Nobody's studying prophecy anymore. Nobody's preaching prophecy. As the message of Christ's first advent announced the kingdom of his grace, so the message of his second advent announces the kingdom of his glory. And the second message, like the first, is based on the prophecies. Desire of Ages, pages 231 to 234. Friends, the second coming is a bigger event than the first coming. You don't think people are going to go out and repeat, Behold, the bridegroom cometh? It's happening. People in the world are waking up. How do I know? Because when I give out books, I see it. I see what people talk about. People come here to work and they talk and they say, my goodness, what's going on in America? What's going on in the world? After the great disappointment in 1844, there were a handful of Adventists that continued to fast, study, and pray for an explanation of what had taken place. I have done the same thing after my expectations did not materialize. And there are two mistakes in part one of that video, Behold the Bridegroom Cometh, that I need to share with you. But before I do, we have to go and get some background on five urgent events that are going on right now. The image of the beast, the seal of the living God, Conrad Vine, Daniel 8, and the seven thunders. This is what this message is going to cover. The image of the beast. On July 22nd, 2024, I emailed you a five-page study entitled, And As It Was in the Days of Noah. In that paper, I explained that although we have always believed that probation closes with the mark of the beast, inspiration tells us that the mark of the beast is the great final test for the people of the world, but the test for the people of God is the image of the beast. I would like to share some excerpts from that study, which you can find on my website, sundaylawalert.com. The Lord has shown me clearly that the image of the beast will be formed prob before probation closes, for it is to be the great test for the people of God, by which their eternal destiny will be decided. This is the test that the people of God must have before they are sealed. Seventh-day Adventist Bible Commentary, Volume 7, page 976. Judgment commences at the house of God. If the test for the world is the mark of the beast, the Sabbath, the church has to have a test before that, and it is the image of the beast. As Seventh-day Adventists, we have confused the image of the beast with the mark of the beast. The consequence of not knowing the difference is fatal for God's people, and the answer is not easy to discern 
since it is buried in pages 445 to 449 of the Great Controversy. Try to find out on your own what is the difference between the image and the, and the, and the mark. Very hard to do. I've read the Great Controversy many times, never paid attention to it. Now I have had to focus on it and pay attention to it. When the leading churches of the United States uniting upon such points of doctrine as are held by them in common, shall influence the state to enforce their decrees and sustain their institutions, then Protestant America will have formed an image of the Roman hierarchy and the infliction of civil penalties upon dissenters will inevitably result. The Great Controversy 445.1. In this paragraph, the image of the beast is still not formed, since none of the churches are guilty of the phrase to enforce their decrees, nor of civil penalties upon dissenters will inevitably result. The image of the beast represents that form of apostate Protestantism which will be developed when the Protestant churches shall seek the aid of the civil power for the enforcement of their dogmas. 445.2, Great Controversy. In this paragraph, the image of the beast is still not formed, since none of the churches are guilty of the phrase shall seek the aid of the civil power for the enforcement of their dogmas. But in the very act of enforcing a religious duty by secular power, the churches would themselves form an image to the beast. Hence, the enforcement of Sunday keeping in the United States would be an enforcement of the worship of the beast and his image. That is the National Sunday Law. Did you notice in the United States not in the world. In this paragraph, the image has been formed and probation is closed for Seventh-day Adventists because the National Sunday Law will have been enacted. The National Sunday Law is the image of the beast and the image of the beast is to be the great test for the people of God. At this point, the Universal Sunday Law is still a future event. Seals number one to four are in progress. But the thunders, the trumpets, and the plagues are also a future event since probation for the world does not take place until the censor is cast into the earth in Revelation 8.5 and the first trumpet sounds in Revelation 8.7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, Seal number two, hunger, seal number three, and with death, seal number four, and with the beast of the earth, Revelation 6, 7, and 8. Notice a fourth part of the earth. That means that those three seals are going to put away two billion people, a fourth of the eight billion people that are alive today. You can see in the bottom, sword equals war equals the second sign in Matthew 24 after false prophets. I don't know if you're keeping track of all the animal attacks that we're having. All sorts of animals. I've got a whole, a whole list of them. Elephants, leopards, dogs, raccoons. They're going crazy. I was shown the inhabitants of the earth in the utmost confusion. Strife, war, and bloodshed with famine and pestilence raged everywhere. Other nations were engaged in this war and confusion. War caused famine. Want and bloodshed caused pestilence. And then men's hearts failed them for fear and for looking after those things which were coming on the earth. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 1, page 268. Again, there you see war, seal number two, famine, seal number three, pestilence, seal number four. We know seals number two to four have not taken place since we've never had two billion people die in the earth. What about seal number one? I believe seal number one started in 1844 in Revelation 6-2. Notice what it says. And I saw and behold the white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. I believe that is Jesus with our church, Laodicean church, that started in 1844. 
Solemn events before us are yet to transpire. Trumpet after trumpet is to be sounded, vial after vial poured out one after another upon the inhabitants of the earth. Scenes of stupendous interest are right upon us. Letter 112, 1890, Seventh-day Adventist Bible Commentary, Volume 7, page 982. Why do I say that? Because the position of our church, based on the book Daniel and the Revelation by Uriah Smith, the trumpets are in the past. If you tell a pastor today the trumpets are in the future, he'll say, no, you're totally wrong. Check it out. The time of God's destructive judgments is the time of mercy for those who have had no opportunity to learn what is truth. Tenderly will the Lord look upon them. His heart of mercy is touched. His hand is still stretched out to save, while the door is closed to those who would not enter. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 9, page 97. But there are now true Christians in every church, not accepting the Roman Catholic communion, who honestly believe that Sunday is the Sabbath of divine appointment. God accepts their sincerity of purpose and their integrity before Him. Great Controversy 449. We're still on the image. Up to here, the mark of the beast is still future, since the entire world has not been enlightened regarding the true Sabbath. But the National Sunday Law already took place in America, and the world is falling apart, and you're going to see that. But the mark of the beast is still future. But when Sunday observance shall be enforced by law, and the world, that's the universal Sunday law, shall be enlightened, that's the loud cry of Revelation 18, the fourth angel, concerning the obligation of the true Sabbath, then whoever shall transgress the command of God will thereby accept the sign of allegiance to Rome, the mark of the beast. And it is not until the issue is thus plainly set before the people and they are brought to choose before the commandments of God and the commandments of men that those who continue in transgression will receive the mark of the beast. Great Controversy 449.1 Now the world is enlightened. The universal Sunday law is enforced and those who continue in transgression will receive the mark of the beast. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, Revelation 18, 1 and 2. This is only half of the story of what happens when the national Sunday law is enacted in America. There are other pieces of the puzzle that are now very clear, and we will study them when we get to the seven thunders of Revelation 10. There's a lot of material we haven't seen. Why? Because Mrs. White wrote, the mark of the beast is exactly what it has been proclaimed to be. Not all in regard to this matter is yet understood and will not be understood until the unrolling of the scroll. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 8, page 159. Now that we understand the difference between the image and the mark, what changes in our understanding of present truth? When the National Sunday Law is enacted, will God's people know if they have been saved? No. Will we stop following Jesus if we know that probation closes after the Universal Sunday Law? No, because we don't know if we're saved or lost. What changes is the procrastination of our spiritual and physical preparation. And this is what is concerning right now for Seventh-day Adventists. This is why all the warnings of Ellen White, we're not going to be ready, we're not going to be ready. Listen, the assumption of power on the part of our nation in the decree enforcing the papal Sabbath is our nation, that's the National Sunday Law, will be a warning to us. It will then be time to leave the large cities preparatory to leaving the smaller ones for retired homes in secluded places among the mountains. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page 464. You only find it in that one place. We were told to leave the cities 122 years ago. That is not the final call to leave the cities, the large cities. Listen, the cities are to be worked from outposts, said the messenger of God, Shall not the cities be warned? Yes. 
not by God's people living in them, but by their visiting them to warn them of what's coming upon the earth. Maranatha 184. The reference in 5T 464 above, it will then be time to leave the large cities, is applicable to Matthew 24. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. For then shall be great tribulation, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Matthew 24. The counsel of Mrs. White in five testimonies is, we should not be living in the large cities. But when we see the Sunday law, it's no longer time to work the cities. You got to get out, get out like Matthew 24 says. You don't have time to get out. You're not going to be able to get out. The great majority of Seventh-day Adventists have been waiting for the enactment of the National Sunday Law to put away our cherished sins and begin our search for property outside of the large cities. Learn how to garden, dig a well, and buy a wood stove. Friends, there's not going to be time for that. We should have been doing that 122 years ago. The events connected with the close of probation and the work of preparation for the time of trouble are clearly presented. But multitudes have no more understanding of these important truths than if they had never been revealed. And the time of trouble will find them unready. Maranatha 2.63 In other words, when the National Sunday Law is enacted in America, get out now. Wherever the Lord leads you, if you are not living in the country, you may stay in the city. Many of our people are going to be there. Many are going to die there. This is what we have been told, unfortunately. Many are going to die in the country too. But nobody is counting on the appearing of Satan. And when Satan personates Jesus Christ, this whole thing could happen in a week. Let's look at it. As we near the close of time, heathen deities will manifest their signal power and will exhibit themselves before the cities of the world. Testimonies to Ministers 117.5 In the last days, Satan will appear as an angel of light with great power and heavenly glory. He will declare that the Sabbath has been changed from the seventh to the first day of the week. And as Lord of the first day of the week, he will present the spurious Sabbath as a test of loyalty to him. Manuscript Releases, Volume 19, page 282. The first personation takes place before the close of probation. Did you notice the words declare and present? Satan's second personation on page 624 of the Great Controversy takes place after the close of probation. At that time, he does not declare or present but commands all to obey the death decree, which is issued nine, page before, nine pages before in the Great Controversy, page 615. There are two personations of Satan, friends. Please check it out. One before probation closes and one way at the end, when the death decree is issued and he commands the people of God to be destroyed. As the crowning act in the great drama of deception, Satan himself will personate Christ, and then, in his assumed character of Christ, he claims to have changed the Sabbath to Sunday and commands all to hallow the day which he has blessed. Great Controversy 624. Although we do not know when probation will close, an event on earth will disclose when the close of probation has taken place, the close of probation for the world, not for the church. When the earnest voice proclaimed at midnight, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him, and the sleeping virgins were roused from their slumbers, it was seen who had made preparation for the event. Both parties were taken unawares, but one was prepared for the emergency and the other was found without preparation. So now, a sudden and unlooked-for calamity, something that brings the soul face to face with death, 
will show whether there is any real faith in the promises of God. The great final test comes at, not before, not after. The great final test comes at the close of human probation when it will be too late for the soul's need to be supplied. Christ's Object Lessons, page 412. I understand this is not what we have believed. We have believed that this is going to be the great test for God's people. That it's going to take a year and a half for this law to be enacted and go into Congress and be approved in Congress. That we may have three and a half years of persecution, etc., etc. I realize all of that. That is all explained in the video. I don't have time to cover it here. Just please stay with me. Please put your prejudices aside, friends. There's a lot to cover in this, in this video. What is the great final test? The Sabbath will be the great test of loyalty, for it is the point of truth specially controverted. The great controversy 605. The Sabbath is a test for the world. We already read that the test for God's people is the image of the beast. The Sabbath is the mark of the beast. When does the great final test take place? The great final test comes at the close of human probation when it will be too, too late for the soul's need to be supplied. Then, after the close of probation, Jesus will take the censer and cast it into the earth, Revelation 8, 5. Then probation closes for the world and the time of Jacob's trouble commences. Then the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. Revelation 8, 6. After the close of probation. A lot of people are saying, oh no, the trumpets are a warning. Why should we get a warning? Did Noah get a warning? Did the people see any magnificent signs? No, they didn't believe Noah. And all of a sudden, probation closed and they knew it not. Then he will put on the garments of vengeance. Then the plagues will come upon the wicked. This is a quote. And they do not come until Jesus puts on that garment and takes his place upon the great white cloud. Then, while the plagues are falling, the scapegoat is being led away. Spalding and Megan Collection, pages 1 and 2. Probation for the world does not close until the censor is cast into the earth in Revelation 8.5. See early writings 279 and 280. And see also the Great Controversy, page 613. Contrary to what many believe, the first trumpet in Revelation 8-7 sounds after the close of probation in verse 5.